Our objective in this lesson is to simplify radicals by removing factors from the radicand. So how do we simplify radical expressions? One is by doing prime factorization. So 64 is equal to 2 times 32. 32 is 2 times 16. 16 is 2 times 8. 8 is 2 times 4. And 4 is 2 times 2. Next step, find the largest perfect square factors. So we have here 4 and that is 2 squared. We also have here 16 which is 4 squared. Therefore, the largest perfect square factors are 16 and the product of these two here. So step 3, take square roots outside. So let's copy square root of 64. We have here 2 times 2, that is 4. So this is equal to square root of 4 times we have a square root of 16. A square root of 4 is 2, a square root of 16 is 4, and 2 times 4 is equal to 8. Therefore, the square root of 64 is equal to 8. Another example, this time let's have a square root of 100. 100 is 2 times 50. 50 is 2 times 25. 25 is already a perfect square. This is 5 squared. So now let's have step 3. Square root of 100. Again, we have 2 times 2, that is 4. So equals is square root of 4 times the square root of 25. A square root of 4 is 2. A square root of 25 is 5. And 2 times 5 is 10. Therefore, a square root of 100 is equal to 10. Another one. Let's have a square root of 32. 32 is equal to 2 times 16. And 16 is already a perfect square. This is 4 squared. So let's copy a square root of 32. We only have 1, 2 here. So this is equal to square root of 2 times the square root of 16. 2 is not a perfect square. So we copy as is. And then square root of 16 is 4. Let us rearrange these two terms. So square root of 32 is equal to 4 is square root of 2. Another one. This time let's have cube root of 64. So instead of finding the largest perfect square factors, we're going to find the largest perfect cube factors. 64 is 2 times 32. 32 is 2 times 16. 16 is 2 times 8 and 8 is a perfect cube that is 2 cube so let's copy cube root of 64 we have here 2 times 2 4 times 2 8 so equals cube root of 8 times cube root of 8 cube root of 8 is 2 cube root of 8 is 2 again and 2 times 2 is 4 so the cube root of 64 is equal to 4 this prime factorization method is helpful, but familiarizing yourself with perfect square and perfect cube tables is still the best way to work with radicals. Let us have some more examples. A square root of c to the 6. This time we have variable. So what does c to the 6 mean? This means multiplying c by itself 6 times. So this is equivalent to the square root of c times c times c times c times c times c. Since we are looking for a square root, the index here is 2, we are going to group this by 2's. So this will be cc times cc times cc. Now, how many groups did we form? 1, 2, 3. Therefore, the answer to this is c to the third power, or c cube. There's another way of solving this. Let us convert this into exponential form. Since the index here is 2, that will be the denominator of the exponent. So this is equal to c raised to 6 over 2. And 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we have c cubed. Same answer. Let's have another one. So this is cube root of p to the 11th power. So this is equivalent to cube root of p multiplied by itself 11 times. Now, since we are looking for cube root, we are going to group this by 3's. So we have PPP times PPP times PPP times PP. 
how many groups did we form that have three P's? One, two, three. So we have P cubed. Now what happens with the remaining P's here? How many? One, two. So we have P squared. We simply have to copy that. So cube root of P is squared. Let's try this method. So this is cube root of P to the 11th. Let us convert this into exponential form. 3 here will become the denominator of the exponent, so this will be equal to p raised to 11 over 3. And 11 divided by 3 is 3 and 2 thirds. Now let us isolate the p cube, and let us rewrite the remaining p raised to 2 thirds. Let us copy p cube, and this one, we're going to convert this into radical form. So the denominator 3 here will become the index of the radical. So we have cube root of p is squared. So we have the same answer. What if we have this? Radicands are combination of constant and variables, and variables are raised to different value of exponents. In this one, both numerator and denominator have radicals. How do we simplify radicals like this? Simplification of radicals. A radical is said to be in simplest form if it satisfies the following conditions. So we have four conditions, but on this particular video, we're going to focus on number one. No factor can be removed from the radicand. Removal of factors from the radicand. Factor the radicand whose exponents are multiples of the index and write the roots of the factors outside the radical and the remaining factors is the new radicand. Let us simplify the following. Number 1 is square root of 80. 80 is equivalent to 16 times 5, so this is equal to square root of 16 times 5. A square root of 16 is 4, and then the square root of 5 is the new radicand. So we have 4 is square root of 5. Number 2, cube root of 96. 96 is equal to 8 times 12, so this is equal to cube root of 8 times 12. Cube root of 8 is 2. The cube root of 12 is the new radicand, so we have 2 cube root of 12. Next one, is square root of 25 over 64. So this is equivalent to square root of 25 divided by square root of 64. A square root of 25 is 5. A square root of 64 is 8. So we have 5 over 8. Number 4, cube root of 15 divided by 64. So this is equal to cube root of 15 over cube root of 64. There is nothing we can do with cube root of 15, but cube root of 64 is 4. So we have cube root of 15 over 4. Let us continue. Number 5 is square root of 25, p to the 4th, q to the 8th power. So this time, we have a combination of constant and variables. Allow me to rewrite this in this manner. Is square root of 25 times square root of p to the 4th times square root of q to the 8th. Is square root of 25 is 5. Now for variables, here's what you are going to do. Simply divide the exponent by the index. So the index here is 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2, so you have p squared. Now here, 8 divided by 2 is 4, so you have q to the 4th power. Next one, cube root of 250, x to the 6, y to the 10th. So let me rewrite this, 125 times 2 is 250. And then x to the 6 remains x to the 6 because 6 is divisible by 3. And then y to the 10th, I made it y to the 9th and y to the 1st power because 9 is divisible by 3. So cube root of 125 is 5. Then 6 divided by 3 is 2, so I have x squared. And then 9 divided by 3 is 3, so I have y cubed. What remains are 2 and y to the 1st power. That will be the new radicand. So cube root of 2y. Let us continue. Number 7 is square root of 8, x to the fifth, y to the 6. Let me rewrite this as square root of 8 times square root of x to the fifth times square root of y to the 6. And then I'll rewrite 8 as square root of 4 times 2. And x to the fifth as square root of x to the fourth times x. For this one, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So I could have y cubed already. 
Now, the square root of 4 is 2. So, I have 2 is square root of 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So, I have x squared times the square root of x. And then, I'll copy y cubed. Then, I'll rewrite first those we factored out. That is 2 x squared and y cubed and then copy square root of 2 and square root of x then i'll combine this into one radical symbol so the final answer is 2 x squared y cubed is square root of 2x next one the cube root of negative 80 c to the ninth 9 divided by 3 is 3 so i could factor out c cube already and then I'll rewrite negative 80 as cube root of negative 8 times 10. And cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. So I'll factor out negative 2. So I have negative 2, C cube, then cube root of 10. Next one, number 9, cube root of 128, A to the 6, B to the 5th, C cube. Let me rewrite this as 64 times 2 for 1, 2, 8. And then A to the 6, copy as is because 6 is divisible by 3. Then B to the 5th power as B cubed times B squared because 3 is divisible by 3. And then copy C cubed. Cube root of 64 is 4. 6 divided by 3 is 2, so I have A squared. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so I have 1B. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so I have 1C. What remains are 2 and B squared. That will be my new radicand. Cube root of 2B squared. Did you notice that the exponent in the new radicand is less than the value of the index? Last one, number 10. 6th root of 64, x to the 11th, y to the 5th, c to the 18th. Let me rewrite this. So I have square root of 64. I did not rewrite 64 because 64 has 6th root. So x to the 11th as x to the 6th and x to the 5th. 6 divided by 6 is 1. And then y to the 5th as is, y to the 5th. And then z to the 18 as is because 18 is divisible by 6. So the 6th root of 64 is 2. And then 6 divided by 6 is 1. So I have 1x. And then for y, I cannot factor it out because the exponent is less than the index. 18 divided by 6 is 3. So I have z cubed. What remains are c to the 5th and y to the 5th. That will be my new radicand. 6th root of x to the 5th, y to the 5th. Notice again that the exponent in the new radicand is less than the value of the index. Quick tips. Familiarization with perfect squares and perfect cubes is a great help in simplifying radicals. Next, no factor can be removed from the radicand if the exponents inside the radical symbol is less than the index. Now, it is time to check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. Let us answer. Number 1 is square root of 125. 125 is 25 times 5. So this is a square root of 25 times 5. The square root of 25 is 5. So I have 5 is square root of 5. Number 2, cube root of 54 divided by 128. 54 is 27 times 2, while 128 is 64 times 2. So this is cube root of 27 times 2 divided by the cube root of 64 times 2. The cube root of 27 is 3. The cube root of 64 is 4. So I have 3 cube root of 2 divided by 4 cube root of 2. Cube root of 2 will be cancelled out, so final answer is 3 over 4. Last one, I'll rewrite this as 16 times 2 for 32. Then a to the 6 as a to the 4 times a squared, 4 plus 2 is 6. And then b to the 9th is b to the 8 and b, 8 plus 1 is 9. And then I'll just copy c to the 12 because 12 is divisible by 4. So the 4th root of 16 is 2. The 4th root of a to the 4, or 4 divided by 4 is 1, so I have 1a. 
And then 8 divided by 4 is 2, so I have 2 Bs. And then 12 divided by 4 is 3, so I have 3 Cs. What remains are 2, A squared, and B. That will be my new radicand. Fourth root of 2, A squared, B. Gets?